15. You open your Bibles there, please. We're going to read some from this, maybe more than one, maybe, well, quite a few verses. How many of you have your Bibles? Now, I want to make sure that the message is being recorded. Is it, brother? And uh, make sure of that. It won't be long. It'll be different. It'll be different. And uh, preachers, I love you. Let me say that before I start. I'm not taking pop shots at nobody. I'm real enough. Now, Brother Fred, hearing what you've heard, if you want me to sit down, I will. All right. Amen. Matthew chapter 15. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying... Now, look up here. Don't look at your Bible right now. Look at me. Here came the religious crowd to Jesus. This is Mr. Super Saint. This is Mr. Religion. Mr. I mean, this is the elite. And by the way, it might do you well to know that's the crowd that gave him all the trouble. Amen? You're all right to say amen there. That won't get you in no trouble right yet. You can say amen. Now, they've got a complaint. Oh, they're all shook up. I mean, they are really having problems with something that happened. Now, look back down at your Bible. Here they are. Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered, and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your traditions? Now let me say something to you folks. Traditions can be one of the meanest and most dangerous things you can have around. Amen? It's killed more churches and done more harm than any one thing I know of. Amen? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curses father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say unto, uh, say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandments of God of none effect by your traditions. Ye hypocrites. Now, he called them what they were. Well, did Isaiah prophesy to you, saying, These people draw nigh uh, unto me with their mouths, and honor me with their lips. But their head is far from me. Is that right? Their feet. Arms. No, he said their... I can't hear you. What did you say? Their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me. Here it is, folks. Now, I want you to underline this. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines my commandments. Huh? The commandments... Of I want you to turn over into the book of Titus, if you would, please. Into the book of Titus. And we're going to read verse 14 of chapter 1. It said, Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn... From the truth, our Father, help us, direct us, don't let us say anything, one single thing, that would be harmful to thy cause. Let me have a good, sweet spirit. Lord, there's a lot of young folks been here this week, a lot of preachers here right now, and have been more. I pray you'd help them to have open and receptive hearts. For I pray this prayer in the name of Jesus and for his sake. 
Amen. I said a moment ago that the crowd that gave Jesus the biggest problem was Mr. Religion. And it's not changed one bit today. I think one of the biggest problems that man is having today is religion. I'm scared to death of it. Honestly, I'm scared to death of religion. Now, there is a pure and undefiled religion, but this is a byproduct of real salvation. You can join religion. Religion can be anything. Mohammedan is religion. Confucius is religion. All kinds of religion across our world today. There's a land where they worship monkeys. I never have worshipped none. I've pastored a few. But never have I worshipped any. Religion is a dangerous, ugly thing. And we're living in a day. Now, let me say something right here. I'm going to take my time. I'm not able to, to rush up and get in the high gear. I just don't feel like it physically. But let me say this. I am a fundamentalist. I believe this book. From, as the colored man said, from lid to lid, from kiver to kiver, from Genesis to revolutions. I believe it all. I don't understand all of it, maybe, but I believe all of it. I am a fundamentalist. I believe the Bible says what it means and means what it says. But my friend, hear me today. My biggest problem today is not coming from the world and the drunks and the bums and the harlots and that crowd. It's coming from that crowd of eye daughters and tea crossers, uh, my friend, that's wanting to bring me in uh, under human rule uh, and take me back under the law and make me perform in an area that God said uh, that grace has set me free uh, and I'm not supposed uh, to be back there anymore. Amen. You're justified by the law. You've fallen from grace already. I'm glad of amazing grace. So many folks said, oh, let me say this again. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm scared to death of these super saints that's better than anybody else. Oh, that crowd scares me to death. I'm just petrified around them. They'll always see somebody. Said, see there what they do? I'm better than they are. Oh, let me say this. If I know what humility is, I am what I am by the grace of God. And in me, that is my flesh, Paul said, dwelleth no good thing. The only thing good about me is that imparted righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Now listen to me. You say, what do you mean? We've come into a day that we're trying to make people live right. You cannot make anybody live right. And if you can press them into some little religious rule and in some little religious mold, they're not a bit better off no how. You said, I heard a young preacher say, Boy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make me some rules. I'm going to write me down some rules and I'm going to make my folks live right. I said, Son, you've got more rules right there than you'll ever be able to carry out. You'll never be able to outdo that if it's not in the books. You don't need it no how. Brother Goolsby and I was talking the other night. There's two ditches on either side of what I'm preaching. And you can go too far either way. You can get off balance. But I do believe there's a scriptural middle of the road. Amen. I believe our churches have been harmed today by a bunch of human rules and regulations that man has made and God's not in. Amen. Now let me show you what I mean. We're trying to be chain gang bosses. We're trying to force folks to conform to some little religious Pharisaic idea. Now let me show you how far we'll go to perform that. 
I'll name some things after a while that I can document. I can prove to you I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not up there just spouting off. I know where there's a church at right now where this happened. This took place. I've known the children ever since they was little old bitty fellows. One of the boys had got into deep sin. Deep sin. Oh, he was so far out there. And one Sunday morning, his mama began to beg him, Honey, go to church with me. Go to church with me today. I want you to go to church with me and sit by me. And he said, Okay, mama, I'll do it. And I've already saw some of them. Boy, you're really waiting so you can tear into me after a while. But his hair was way down here, and he had it tied up in a pony's tail. And he said, okay, Mama, I'll go with you. I'm watching you. I want to see how you're going to react. You don't know which way I'm going, do you? And he went with his Mama, and I know the church. I've preached in it many times. And he sat down and put his arm around his Mama. And the preacher saw him come in and made him quit singing and walk back to where he was and said, young man, you get up and get out of here. You can't come in here with your hair like that. Now, I'm watching you. I want to see how you're taking that. I want to tell you how I'm taking that. That's scriptural stupidity. That's dumber than a box of rocks. You have to go to school somewhere and major in ignorance to get that done. Because you're not that far from being a blooming idiot. Amen. Oh, you said, buddy, we got some standards. We don't allow them to come in here with their hair down. God said it's a sick that needs a physician. Some of you are so concentrated. Oh, buddy, I'm going to take my stand. The world's going to know how rough I am. The world's going to hell while you're trying to prove how tough you are. Amen. You don't impress me a puking bit by your stinking rules. And that boy said, okay, but I'll never be in church again. And he's never been back. Now that didn't impress God a bit. But you said, how do you stand on long hair, preacher? Let me tell you, look up here. I believe a man ought to look like a man. But you're in worse shape than he is if your old heart has got so cold that you're more concerned about the length of his hair than you are the blackness of his soul. Amen? You said, oh, buddy, I'm tough. I like seeing preachers just read it. I see preachers start preaching. And I hear a bunch of them say, lay her down there. Shake that tree a while. Oh, stay there a while. That bunch is not interested in soul. All they're trying to prove is how scripturally rough they are. Amen? They're trying to build them a reputation. But I've been around here long enough to know that crowd that will sick you on a lot of times we'll turn on you and devour you like a bunch of wolves. Amen? You still with me? But I ain't through yet. Well, you said, would you actually let some old boy come down to the altar with long hair if it was dragging his tracks out? I'm going to. Some of you are afraid to amen because you're afraid somebody will see you and say, well, he agrees with blue. I know of a church where the women were out visiting on Saturday and a girl was moving into the community. And they invited her to come to church. She said, I'll be there Sunday. When she came in, she had a pair of slacks on. 
And the preacher said, you can't stay here like that, and ran her off and told her she'd have to leave. Now, folks, you better be careful what you're thinking. Some of you are sitting there right now saying, Blue's compromising. No, God's broke my heart over our ignorance. And we've been acting stupid, amen? We're trying, to, we're trying to dress the flesh up and trying to make it act right. And the only time man's life will be changed is when the inside is changed. Amen. It'll not change him to make him conform on the outside. You can make him shave his head. And that won't make his soul saved. And they run the woman off. She said, I'll never be back in church again. We go around laying rules down just exactly like this bunch of Pharisees did, and we're more concerned with our reputation as fundamental Baptists than we are a dying world that's going to hell. Amen? You said, do you believe in women's wine slacks? Now, you that know me, Know my preaching and know my manner of life for only here. You know better than to ask a stupid question like that. No, I don't. I believe ladies ought to wear dresses. I do. At home. I don't believe they ought to wear them to church. But let me say this, folks. Let me say this for God's sake. Hear me. If an old girl comes in your church with a pair of slacks on that's never known Jesus in her life, if you're saved, she ain't going to hurt you. She's not going to do you no harm. Well, you say, what should I do? Let her see you're a Christian. Let her see you're saved. You say, well, what do you think I ought to do? If you're a great dear Christian lady, you ought to go hug her neck and say, we're glad to have you. Let me sit with you today. Amen? Oh, I don't know what folks would think if I can sit with her. Uh, hush, Dumbo. Moron. Miss Blue, stand up, honey. Would you please? You're back there a long ways back, but stand up. That's my wife. That's my sweetie pie. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. I want to talk to you about Miss Blue and I. We like to wreck our children. We come that close to losing. You know how we done it? You want me to tell you how we done it? My wife would constantly say, Now remember, you're the preacher's kid. Oh, what will they think if they see the pastor's kid? I want to tell any of you right now, raise them with love and concern for this book. Don't raise them for that bunch of turkeys out there. They're not concerned about it. All they're trying to do is find a fault so they can throw it. Amen? Don't try to raise them for that bunch out there. Fool it on what they think. Amen? You raise them for sweet Jesus. Amen? Raise them for the Lord. Oh, if looks at kill, I'm dead. Amen? Yes, sir. What will they think? What will they think? Well, there's people, they don't have to see something to think. They'll just think whether they see it or not. Amen? There's people ready to draw their gun down on you whether you do one thing wrong or not. And, and my wife, right now, is a nervous wreck. I mean an absolute wreck. Because for years... She tried to live, and I tried to help her to live to suit people. Well, I've got, some, I've got something very profound to say to you that want me and Mama to live like you want us to live. It's very profound. Fly up your nose. 
There's probably not a preacher's kid here right now that don't have a scar on it trying to make that little feller a little old girl lived to suit them stinking members. Amen. They want you to make them do something they won't even do their self. Amen. I was so afraid for years. You know, you remember when Coca Cola's come out in a can? I was afraid to drink one. Out in public, afraid somebody'd think it's a it's a beer. Huh? We're a sick bunch of folks. You're not supposed to live for me. You're supposed to live for Jesus. Your life ought to be clean and dedicated to God. You ought to want to guard your reputation, but for Jesus, not for me. Amen? If you're... Listen, one woman said, Well, I quit wearing my slacks. I just don't wear... I just don't wear... I said, Why? Well, she said, I'm supposed to. I said, why? And she said, preacher. I said, oh, too. Wrong reason. Well, you said, I've gotten to church now and i got my hair cut. Why? Well, preacher said, I'm supposed to. Wrong reason. <laughs> Amen? If you just quit something to satisfy me, that's the wrong reason. The Bible said the love of Christ constrains me. That's what holds me. That's, that's what makes me want to live right. You say, well, you drink a Coke in a can? Briggers. Amen? <laughs> you know them root beers they got now, them gray cans? One fellow said, you can't drink them. I said, give them to me, I will. See, there's some you just want to find something wrong with somebody. You don't want to see something good in them. You want to find something bad in them. Amen? God said man looks on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. Hello. They said they didn't wash their hands. They just didn't do it. Oh, you said, Preacher Blue, you, had you backed up on that? No, sir. I'm right where I was. Standing right there. But I'm sick and tired of seeing churches filled and running over a lot of times. And you start checking out. And the only thing that's making them live right is a bunch of rules. The thing that ought to make you live right because you love Jesus. Amen? Now, I'm going to go over some things, and I'm, I'm, let me say this. Before I get into it, don't jump up and say, park here a while. I'm not interested in your parking grounds. Don't jump up and say, shake that bush again. I'm going to name some things that some good men have got caught up in. Good men. Good preachers. I don't know how they've done it, but they did. And maybe there was a time in my own ministry when I was more concerned about rules and regulations and trying to make people do this and make folks do that and make them force them in. My God, help me and forgive me for everything that i ever done like that. Amen? How many preachers we got here tonight? Can you stand up? Let's see. Brother Fred, you wear glasses. Come here, sir. Come here. They're not your color. No, they're not. But, oh, my soul. You're standing wearing those colors. No, it's not it. Now, I know of a dear man, a good man, and don't you go lie and say I was picking on him, that would not let Fred Vault preach in his church because it's got wire right up here. Now, Brother Don, that's bad. 
You say, well, boy, that's regulations and that's rough and that's that. No, folks. No, no. Don't, don't jump off at that. In my own thinking, that, uh, that's, that's embarrassing. You can be seated. Amen. And I spotted another thing about Fred while he's up here. I know of a preacher that if a preacher's cuffs are it is so wide, he, he can't preach in his church. And old Fred, he don't qualify there either. Amen. You done struck out twice. And my soul, he's got on boots. That really done you. Amen. That really done you. Amen. You said, why, Brother Blue, you've got to have some rules. You've got them right here. You've got them right here. All you'll ever be able to handle. Amen. Now, remember, I said, you don't have to shake hands with me after church. You can pass it. Just don't hurt Mama back there. She's getting old and crippled and broke down. She can't run as fast as I can. All right, let me go on. I know the church. If you came in, you and your wife came in and sat down in church. Now, this is man's rules. And the preacher or the preacher's wife thought that you were sitting a little close together. They'd come over to you with a rule and stick a rule between your shoulder and her shoulder. And you have to be at least nine inches apart. Now, me and my wife don't get to go to church much together. But you stick a rule between me and Mama, and I'll slap your stinking face. I'll knock a knot on your head. You'll have to climb a ladder to scratch, horse. I might put my arm around Mama and squeeze her just a little bit. I mean in front of God and everybody. Amen. Now, Brother Don, it just don't do for a man to come and stick a rule between me and my wife. Huh? Well, you said, boy, they've got standards. No, they've got idiot ignorance running out their ears. That's ignorance, folks. I don't believe in turning the, the church into a sparking parlor. and a sm I don't believe in that. But bless your heart, when you get to running around with a rule to see if a man or his wife or some young Christian couple are uh, sitting there in decency and order, and you've got to run around and stick a rule in them, honey, you better get back to the altar and get your priorities straightened out. Amen. That's ignorance. All right, let me let me name you another one. I know of a dear preacher. I mean, a, listen, he's a good preacher. That he won't let a preacher preach in his church unless they've got a black suit, a white shirt, a black tie, and black shoes on. Got to have it. Got to be that way. Now, folks, help straighten me out. If I'm if I'm that far off, my God of mercy. You say, Brother Blue, does he dress that way? He thinks the preacher's supposed to get up every Monday morning and put a tie on. Now let me tell you something. You come over to my place next Monday, I I'll have blue jeans on. I'll have a, a knit shirt on. I'll have my old uh, 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 Sneakers on, amen. Oh, you said you don't look like a preacher. I want to get broke profound again. <laughs> now, you ain't going to shake me up, Hoss. I'm too near home. Oh, you said I'm going to straighten you out after church. I might box your jokes. I haven't felt good in two days now, and I'm a half breed Cherokee, and I may scalp you. Of course, I can see somebody's done beat me too, some of you. Amen. I know of a preacher that some of, some of the members of a church asked their pastor, said, can Brother so-and-so come and preach for us? He said, well, yes, let him come on. And the preacher got over there, and I'm going to say this. This preacher that was going to preach is one of the, I mean, one of the dearest friends I got. But, and for years, I didn't know it, but as a, as a boy, as a kid, some disease, he lost all of his hair. And I didn't know it for a long time. He wears a hairpiece, a toupee. 
And, and I didn't know it for a long, long time. And he went over to preach for this preacher, and this preacher spotted him. Oh, I said, uh, Brother, i got some standards here. We, we can't let you preach. Well, he said, Why? Well, he said, uh, That old false hair you got. I'll see it. How do you like that, boy? Now, folks, listen to me. As I said the other night, if that's all the brains you got, don't sleep on the side of your head. Your brain will run out your ear. Now, that's ignorance. That's not the basis of a man not being able to preach. That doesn't say he's not God's man. Amen? Oh, some of you just dying to get back to your preacher said something out so blue. I don't know if we'll have him or not. Well, be sure to tell him. I want you to buy one of these tapes tonight and take to him. So if he's got me booked and he don't like this, he can cancel me because I'm planning to preach it when I get there. Oh, you ain't heard nothing yet. Now, I want you to watch me real, real close. I, uh, I was at a church preaching some old while back, and I preached, and the pastor called me in the study. His face was pale, and he said, I've never been so embarrassed in my life. He said, I just never have been so embarrassed in my life. He said, I thought about getting up and taking my children out. And I said, for heaven's sake, why? He said, those, that ugly, ugly thing that you did that embarrassed my people. Now, I want to ask you something, ladies and gentlemen. I've done what he was talking about seven times since I've been talking to you. But he was ready to run his children out the door and put hands over his wife's eyes and and said, I embarrassed him. Have, how many of you have saw me do anything that's embarrassed you or your wife or children? If I have, I, I, I'm sorry if you're that sick. How many of you have spotted me doing anything that you think he was chewing me out of that? Well, I'll tell you what it was. Pushing my glasses up. Yeah. Yeah. He said, well, I said, listen, said, that's obscene. I said, no, it ain't. My nose is sweating and my glasses slide down. And there they go again. That's just the way I push him up. But that fellow, that fellow was running around looking for something to criticize about. Amen. Let me tell you another one. My brother started to buy a car here a while back. I, is it a Camaro, Mama? What kind is it? I can't think what name it is. It's just got a name on it. He was out there looking at it, and a fella come running up and said, Brother Bobby, what you doing? Well, he said, I'm going to buy me a car. Well, he said, you ain't going to buy this thing, are you? And he said, well, I like it. Oh, he said, this is a whirly car. How many of you know my brother Bobby? Any of you? Oh, Bobby's like me, you know. He said, in his best English, he said, Huh? <laughs> oh, he said, that's whirly. Oh, that's whirly. Bobby said, Huh? He said, that name, Camaro. Bobby said, Camaro. <laughs> and his wife walked around and said, Camaro. Camaro, Camaro. And he said, Whirly, Brother Bobby. 
<laughs> I want to go somewhere and pew. I don't mean just throw up. I mean pew. We've turned into a bunch of religious nuts. Super saints. Amen. Buddy, I tell you, but they're going to have to be just like me. They're going to have to believe everything I believe. They're going to see just like me. Shut up, ignorance. There may be some old boy in the church that got saved two or three weeks ago. He's still a baby in Christ. He may be still smoking, chewing back. What are you going to do? Run him off, horse? What do you want to do? Hit him over the head and make him be right? No! Let him stand the Word a while. Let him see some saints living for God. Let him get some preaching. Pray for him and love him. He'll see the wrong of it after a while. Amen. Amen. Oh, bless God, we run them off. I'm going to come on, Blue. There's a dear lady sitting right here, and I'm not picking on you, lady, but I know of a church where they'd come to you and tell you to pull your hair down over your ears. You're not supposed to see your ears. I know. I'm, listen, I'm not just thinking up, is that right, Mama? That's the truth. I know of another church where, fellas, you can't go in if you don't have a towel. got to have a tie. Be barefooted, but you got to have a tie. Oh, let me tell you this. I, I like I like outfits like this. Sports. I, oh, I dig them the most. <laughs> to me, that's a groovy outfit he's got on. I like that. I mean, I think that's cool. I think it's got it all together. I mean, I do. And I, I I've got one sport coat. I wish I had some more, but just got one. I'd wear. I like that thing. It's a. It's tan. It's not. It's a little darker tan than that. I like that thing. <laughs> and I was somewhere a while back, and the fellow said, I was going to, to a church, and he said, when are you going to get ready for church? I said, I'm, I'm ready. I mean, I'm ready right now. He said, you're kidding. I said, no, I'm ready. He said, you ain't going to go dress like that, are you? Well, I said, you don't want me to take it off, do you? And what his belly aching was, his complaints about, was about my sports coat. And I had on a pair of brown shoes, you know, that got the slip on them. And he said, oh, preachers ought never to wear them. Gag a maggot. I mean a healthy maggot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bob said, Come my rock. Come my rock. Come my rock. Oh, Robert ain't figured that out yet. <laughs> oh, it drives him crazy, wondering why it was whirly. <laughs> Come my rock. I was, I was, <laughs> I was supposed to preach with a fella in a revival, and because I had a double knit suit on, he wouldn't work with me. Oh, them super saints, boy! Ooh, oh, fly away, oh glory! I wish they would. <laughs> And run out of gas somewhere, amen. <laughs> I'm tired of that mess, amen. I'm tired of that junk. Let me give you another one here. I know this. Now, this is so, folks. Now, if you think I'm, I'm honest before God, my hand's up to heaven. I know of a man that'll come to camp meetings. And he won't, oh, listen, he won't shout unless you, 
Every time, the only time you say amen is when you say, I oh, bless God, I'm preaching out of the King James Version. Amen! Amen! That's the only time you'll do it. You said, aren't you a King James man? Yes, sir. But it's amazing how much more there is to say amen about in here. Yeah, I'm a King James man. 1611. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. But folks, he's gone to seed. That's the only thing that touches his nerve center. That's the only thing that turns him on. Amen? And do you know what his big message is against? Listen to this. My hand's up. God, you know I'm telling right. That man's big message is on tongues. He's against people taking tongues. Dope. Well, if he eats some of the places I have to eat, he'll buy them by the wheelbarrow. They're good, boy. They're good. <laughs> Anybody got a tongue? Huh? Do you pay Because man wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Old Fred Tuck. But this man's big, strong message is against taking tongues. Now, if you figure that out, please write me a letter and tell me. I'm about to die to find out why. But the saddest thing about it all is a bunch of fallen fellers holler amen to him. And they don't know why either. They're just fine. <laughs> they just got to have something to sanction. Folks, when did we get to the place that we had to concoct something up besides this? Where did we get off there? How did that come about? Where did that get into our churches at? It's in there, and don't you think it's not? Amen? Amen? Now you go ahead and throw away and quit this and quit that and stop this and stop that every day of your life. But if you're not doing it because the Holy Ghost of God and God for Him, you're wrong. Amen. And then after you do it, after you have done it, if you do it, if you jump up on your soapbox and say, boy, you've got to do just like I am, and you feel like you're better than they are, you're worse than they are. Amen. Yes. You remember that fellow that said, Lord, I can just hear him. I thank thee that I am not as other men are. I used to pastor that church. I thank you. I'm better than they are, Lord. You know I tithe. And I've already spotted some of you here tonight. You've done got yourself way up high, haven't you? You wash your hands, don't you, boy? You are so good. May the next time you pick your nose a booger about you... You silly thing. You're nothing but a Pharisee. That's all you are. When you do something, you see something in your own life that the Holy Ghost convicts you of and you quit it. You let God have the same right to do that for them. Amen? It's not your job to go over there and say, Bless God, I've done it. You to know. The same God, if it was God that told you to do it, is big enough to do the same thing for them. You let the preacher, the man of God, get up and preach the Word with love and compassion, and if God's in it and God's in them, He'll get to them. Amen? 
one of the greatest losses in the pulpit today is compassion. Compassion's the greatest thing we've lost. We've lost it. It's gone. We don't have it anymore. Amen. And so, we're busy being chain gang bosses. All right, let me go on. I might as well just plow this row on out. I know this. I know this. It's so... Your wife may not wear them. That's fine. That's none of my business. But I know we're a church. A man dared his women to get them shoes that did not have a strap. After they had to have a strap or they couldn't come in the church. Now let me tell you something, folks. Oh, you said it looks like the world looks like... Now let me say this to you. Let me say, I'm not a hippie. Don't believe in the hippies. Don't endorse the hippies. But let me tell you something right now. I'm not talking about the outside conforming. You say, well, you can't do this because the hippies... I hope the hippies never do find out how good cornbread crumbled in buttermilk is. Amen, I love cornbread crumbled in buttermilk. Well, you said if the hippies do it, shut up. <laughs> what Lord help may they never eat turnip greens. God's not talking about something that silly. That's not what God's saying when He said, Be not conformed. It's something deeper and more than that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about that old lost, base, sinful, dirty soul. Not just wearing a certain color shoes or a certain color shirt. Amen? Well, let me get on with it. I said these were good men. Good men. That fellow was against tongues. That fellow was against tongues. If he'd have been here tonight, he'd probably give two or three thousand dollars. If you'd just give him a right to preach on tongues for about an hour. That's the kind of fellow he is. Good man. Believe his son. But now here's one. I say this and down close to the last because, boy, I get some reaction on this. You ready? I know the church. Now, folks, and you're going to know it when I say it because many of you will know about it. One of the greatest preachers in America. I don't agree with him. If every one of you do, I don't agree with you. He will not allow a man to hold an office in his church if he owns or rides a motorcycle. I wonder if there'd be anything wrong with riding a horse or a bicycle. Folks, you listen to me right now. If you get to church and you want to go on dog sled, come ahead. Amen? Amen. Well, you say you ride a motorcycle? No, I'm scared to death of them. There ain't enough wheels there. But it will not injure my spiritual welfare with Christ. Amen? Well, let me turn over here and get my gun, and then I'm going to sit down. I'm going back there with Mama and sit down. Because we may have to leave fast. Now, you better watch this business of trying to make folks be like you. <clears throat> Here we go. You ready? Grab a hold of something real good. You said, Preacher Blue, you've let us know how you feel about men wearing long hair. I feel like a man ought to wear hair. That you can tell he's a man. I believe that with all my heart. I believe a man ought to wear short hair. Now, that ought to make two or three of you shout. I, I've already spotted you. You've been shouting about that. Everybody else, you ought to do it for me. Amen. But you're sitting there with your old lip on. You ain't got me shook up, Hoss. I done picked you out a while ago. You said, Preacher, do you believe a man ought to do it? Yes, sir. I believe you ought to go to the barber shop. Fact is, I need a little taken off right back there right now. I do. How do you feel about mustache and beard?
Now that's what's got some of you in trouble going by your feelings. Now, I don't know why it is, I'm plagued with skin cancer. I've got them on my face, and my doctor's a Christian. He loves the Lord. We pray together in his office. He's a Christian man. He loves the Lord. He's not a Baptist, but he loves the Lord anyhow. But one day he told me, he said, Ed, I don't know how you'll feel about this. I really don't. But said, the older you get, the skin of your face is going to lose the moisture, and those cancers are going to get worse. And it's going to eat your face off. They're just going to be real bad. And said, I'm going to make a suggestion that you grow a beard to cover and shade your face. I'm watching you. Oh, I can see some of you super saints just ready to get me after church, ain't you? Huh. Huh. I'm going to clobber you, hoss. <laughs> well, you said, I see you don't have one. No. Not yet. Why? Well, one reason, I'd look like a pig in a parachute. Amen. That fellow, that looks good. And old Ho-Ho-Ho, he looks good, too. Only thing I'm mad about, I wish I could transfer it up here. Amen. But I remember, I remember a preacher that heard what the doctor said, a big preacher that if I call his name, you'd know he supports me and Mama. He sends us some money once a month. And he let us know right off, if you grow one, let your beard grow one day, I'll cut your support off. Now you say, well, is that the reason you're having it? No. No, if you support us and you cut it off, if that's the only reason you can think of, I'd rather you go ahead and do it anyhow. Just help yourself. If you're looking for something, you'll find it anyhow after a while. Amen. When God gave me the car that I drive, the Cadillac, did you know our support dropped? It dropped. You say, why? Because some people like some of you. You think a preacher is supposed to come to church on a skateboard? But if God gives me another Cadillac, I'm going to drive it. I'm going to enjoy it. And i got a feeling He's going to give me another one. This one's got buttons all over it. Got computers in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you said now, how do you feel about a beer? I'm glad you asked. In the book of Isaiah, I'm told that they took Jesus and one feller was so stupid, he said, well, I believe they took a magnifying glass and tweezers and pulled them out. Somebody help that poor feller. He's crippled too high for crutches. David's men went out one time and they were captured and the enemy taken and cut their beard off. And they were ashamed. And David sent them word, says, stay out there until your beard goes back. Stay away until your beard goes back. I hear men jump up and quote from Spurgeon. Oh, oh, Brother Spurgeon, 
Hey, Hoss, you better get one of his pictures. Or quit quoting one. Amen. By the way, while I'm there, you, I hear some of you fellas talking about Feeney. He's had long hair. <laughs> Whoa! That loaded your wagon, didn't it? Amen. <laughs> I've got something to say to that crowd. Shamey, shamey, shamey. Now let me bring the message to conclusion. I'm going to sit down and shut up. I'm, I've got about a third of you about so mad you're about to break your teeth, huh? I've not come up here tonight to act smart, to be a comic. Our churches tonight are in bad shape. The world's looking at us as we go around about our little rule settings and regulations. And we're making fools out of ourselves. We're majoring on the minor. We're more concerned in making man conform to our ideas than we are preaching the Word to him and getting him born again. Amen? I'm nearly home. I won't be here long, much longer anyway. But if I've ever offended or said anything that would force you or make you think that I had some rule or regulation that I was trying to get you to conform to, I profoundly apologize to you. But from this day forward, by the grace of God, I'm going to try to get me into Jesus. I'm going to do my best to love them and preach to them with compassion and try to get them to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm having doors shut on me that you wouldn't believe. I had a committee to drive 100 miles the other day to question me and ask me if I was compromising. And let me say this with love and not with a smart attitude. If you support me and Mama and you want to cut our money off, help yourself, for I'm not going to change. May the Lord help us that Jesus came into this world because He loved us. And He said, As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Our Father, take the message. Use it for your glory in Christ's name. Amen.